I want to read. I want to read this before we we shift from this space. I read it to the team this morning. As David was even ministering to us, that is who you are. I love it where it says in Luke 5, it, it reads this. This is Jesus. And I truly believe this is a word for somebody. Before we shift into the scripture for the sermon for today, receive this word, fam. It says, Jesus, Luke 5. And he saw two ships standing by the lake, talking about Jesus. But the fishermen were gone out of them. They were washing their nets. In, in other words, to give contents, contact, they gave up. They, they, they put work in this specific area and there was no fruit to show for their work. Has anybody ever been in a season in your life where the only thing you have to show for this specific area is blood, sweat, and tears? So they have reached the point where they said, we might as well just throw in a towel and wash our nets and try this another day. But thank God, Leah, that Jesus showed up. And he goes a little bit further and it says, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. Thank God that Jesus can intercede on your behalf. Even when you thought you was giving up, that you have a Lord and Savior that's interceding on your behalf when you are getting ready to throw in the towel, when you are getting ready to say, this is not my moment, this is not my season. There's a Lord and Savior who's interceding and pushing you back into the space, into the spot where you belong because you are blessed, you will multiply, you are anointed, you are called. God will push you back right where you belong. I feel like I'm screaming it at you. And he prayed that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and he taught the people of the, um, out of the ship. Verse four, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Simon Pacific, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. I believe Here's what I believe. I believe it with all my heart. This is not even a message, but not just for this church, for you Pacific. You are in a season where God is saying, please let down your nets. You are not by the shore anymore. You are out in the deep. You have a, you have a, you, you know that season when you're out in the deep and you have no ledge to hold on to. The only hand you can grab is Jesus' hand all by yourself. That's when you know you are out in the deep where you don't have any resources to grab. You don't even know if you have enough people around you to can grab. God has you in solitude all by himself out in the deep. And he's saying, grab my hand. In verse 5, sometimes we can be like Peter. Peter said, Peter answered him, Simon answered, said, said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my net. I believe this is a word for you. We, we, I believe this is a word for you. Somebody in here today, family, somebody even online, you are in a never the less season right now, my gosh. Where you have toiled in this space, in this season, and there's no fruit to show for the work that you have been put it in. And God is saying, I need you to have a never the less attitude right now. I need you to have a nevertheless praise in your spirit right now. 
because what I'm getting ready to do, I'm getting ready to send the multitude your way, and I need you to be in a space if you just send your word, God. Nevertheless, I know you're getting ready to do something. Nevertheless, I know you're getting ready to turn it around, despite what it may look like right now. We praise him. Why? Because when he sends his word, healing shows up. When he sends his word, peace begins to show up. He is the way maker. Even when you don't see him working, his word is working on your behalf. So all you got to do is lift up your voice, praise your king, begin to shout to the hill where all of your help comes from. Why? Because nevertheless, nevertheless, when your back is against the wall, nevertheless, when your marriage is on the rocks, never the less never the less means as long as Jesus is on the scene there's still a plan you may feel as though that your back is against the wall you may feel as though that you're on the ropes and you're at this place the space where you're getting ready to give up and God is telling you today my friend God is telling you today, my brother, my sister, that he wants you to praise him with a nevertheless attitude because you're closer than you have ever been. One scripture later, Peter lets down his net and everything that he missed in one season, everything that he missed in all of the seasons, it actually came in this season. So where you feel as though that you missed your timing on specific things, God can accelerate you and begin to release everything in one season that you thought you missed all of the years ago. So this is why we praise him, not because what he's getting ready to do, but we understand that everything comes from our God. And when man doesn't get it right in our life, or even when we don't get it right in our life, nevertheless, God can begin to make a move. Keep your nevertheless attitude. I don't know who that word is for. I'm going to pray it over you. Because I believe it's a word for somebody. I know it's a word for me. Because there can be some seasons in your life where you are tired of being tired. Come on, family. There can be some seasons in your life when it's though you can you feel as though you can't get it right. There can be some seasons in your life where you have tried everything. You have told you in this specific space. And then when there's a Jesus, when there's a Jesus, that's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Come on, just begin to stretch your hands to heaven. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. That is who you are. Nevertheless, we will praise you. Nevertheless, we will lift up our voice and worship you. Nevertheless, you are the one who sets the broken back to straight. Nevertheless, we worship you on today. You are our way maker. You are the one. We love you. We honor you. We praise you for even that word, even right now. That is who you are. Amen. Amen. If you can stay standing, I want to read Genesis 12, 1 and 7. We're going to dive a little bit into this word. I, I, I believe this is a word for you as well. Genesis 12, 1 and 7. Do you have it? If you can shout amen. And it reads, it says, the Lord said to Abram, go from your land, your relatives and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. Receive this word, family. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. 
He took his wife, Sarah, his nephew, Lot, and all the possessions they have accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out from the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the site of Shechem at the oak uh, Marah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Verse 7, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to your offspring, I will give this land. And we'll pause right here. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. The title of today's message, family, and I believe each and every one of us can relate to this. If you're taking notes, just write down road trip. Road trip. Road trip. If your life, if your journey feels like a road trip, come on, somebody. If you can look at your stories in your life, it just feels as though God has you on a road trip. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for this word. Open up our minds, our heart, our spirit even right now. As you minister to us, Lord God, we believe that your word is going to increase us. Give us faith. Let us run after you like never before. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody shout amen, 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 amen. You guys can go ahead and have your seats. Amen, amen. At this time, you can go ahead and dismiss our our students' ministry. Amen. Amen. How you guys feel? You feel good? Amen, amen. Amen. Come on, can we give our hand of applause for David for leading us in worship today? Amen. Appreciate that, David. Amen. As we even get ready to jump into the word, I was just thinking as, as David does a phenomenal job with lead, leading us in worship from here and there. But can we put our hands together, family? I want to share some news with you. Come on, a couple of weeks ago, we actually made a hire. Come on, Celebration Church has their own worship pastor. Come on, somebody. We are building our teams. Amen, amen. So each and every one of you, come on. You've got a, if you got a beautiful voice, let me, let me lead with that. <laughs> if you got a beautiful voice, I know many of you guys have reached out. You're looking forward to jumping on the team and, and getting plugged in. Come on, I can't wait to introduce our worship pastor in a couple weeks. You guys met him a couple times already. Just a phenomenal individual, a phenomenal guy, but he has a worship heart. He has a pastor heart, and I can't wait. that What God is building right here, in this space, we're, we're taking it glory to glory, and God is getting ready to do something phenomenal. But uh, if I can share one more update before we jump into the Word. Come on, are you excited for tomorrow morning, the drawing board? Come on. Hopefully you guys have, have already texted in the number. You have the Zoom link. I'm telling you, it's going to be phenomenal. Definitely. I'm going to give you the number even right now, and uh, Keith is going to throw the slide up on the screen for you guys. If you have your phone and you're like, what is the drawing board? The drawing board, hear this family. If you're in a season right now where you're looking for God and you're looking to rediscover your passion in Christ, I'm telling you right now, you do not want to miss this. If you were with us even back early this year through our 21 days of prayer and fasting, just the prophetic word that was coming through, what God was, was discipling us and, and leading us for each day, I truly believe this drawing board is going to be phenomenal for this church. But hey, if you can't join us on that Monday, here it is. Please subscribe to our YouTube page. And we're going to be uploading it on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. so that you can follow, fo- uh, follow along. The drawing board is going to be something that we're going to be doing throughout the year. It's just not going to be for these first six weeks. It's actually going to be something that we're going to be doing throughout the year. Why? Because God is speaking something through this house, and we understand that Sundays is just not enough, that we have to begin to build rhythms and routines in our life where we stay close to him. Because each and every time we stay close to him, he's releasing a word into our spirit that's going to make us better. So if you have your phone, just text TDB to this number, 703-844-1223. And again, that's 703-844-1223 to receive all of the information. Amen? Amen, amen. So if I can just have your, uh, my, I mean, have your attention for the next moment. But we're talking about road trip. Come on, anybody like going on a road trip here? Okay, okay. I wasn't really uh, look, uh, looking for that. I'm talking about actually getting. Let me let me be more specific. 
actually getting in a, in a vehicle with kids and you like taking a road trip. Let me get a little bit more specific. Okay, only a few, only a few. But hey, I'm telling you, family, if I can be, if you're anything like me, when I take a road trip or even when I just go in, in, into my job on, on, on a Monday, I don't go nowhere without my GPS. Anybody like that? Uh, anybody in here? You know, my, I could be going to work. I could be on my way home from work. I know how long it's going to take. I know the details I need to take. I don't go nowhere without my GPS. I got to make sure I have my GPS. Matter of fact, if I could do a survey real quick, let me see who, who I'm ministering into here. Come on, where are all of my Apple Maps folks at? Come on, just make some noise real quick. Okay, okay, only a few, only a few. Where are my, my, my Google folks, Google Maps? Google Maps, okay, okay, okay. Where's all of us? Come on, we, we, come on, all of our ways. Yeah, there we go. Come on. I'm telling you, ways is real, ways is ignorant like me sometimes. Ways will, ways will send you through somebody backyard, through the alley, just to, just to cut off 30 seconds. Just like, why you made me go through all of that just to get 30 seconds ahead of that car right there? That's the same car that I saw 30 minutes ago. Yeah, I had to go through all of that, but I love ways. I know some of you love ways if you like Julius because he got his foot is a little heavy and it lets you know about the police that's out there. <laughs> All of the ways folks are laughing right now. It's just, but um, I don't go nowhere. And to be honest, if I can, I don't know what Android has, Leah. Uh, this is our iPhone, uh, our iPhone stuff. I don't know if Android actually has maps. I don't, I don't, I just, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but, but what I love about, what I love about a GPS, what I love about a GPS is that in order for a GPS to be effective, it's, it's asking two questions. In order to, for a GPS to be effective for its purpose, one, it needs to know the destination. If you, you can have a GPS in your car. It has no effect if it doesn't know the destination. My prayer for you, even as we go through this series and I am here, is that you're gaining more of where you're going in your life. Your life has a destination. Your marriage has a destination. Your career, your business, your personal relationship with Jesus Christ has a destination. But in order to know where you're going, you also have to ask the question, where am I right now? See, a GPS is only effective, one, where it knows it's going, but two, where are you right now? That's a question that it asks. It asks for my location. There's nothing more frustrating than using a GPS that doesn't have enough signal to actually give you the next step of where you're going because it cannot identify your location. In order to identify the location, a GPS must have enough signal from where you are connected back to the source. So we would sit there, if you're frustrated like me, and it's trying to identify where you're at, but there's nothing wrong with the source. It's actually something wrong with my spot. See, a lot of times when we're looking at even at our GPS, if our signal is weak, it's nothing wrong with the actual satellite, the signal from Waze. It's actually my location that's not able to connect with the satellite, with the Waze, in order to identify my space. But as soon as it makes its connection, we can identify our next step that we're getting ready to take. So my question even today is, is your location proper? Because sometimes in, in, in areas or seasons in my life, I cannot identify my next step. Could it be, could it be, could it be that my location is not accurate with God? Because everything is based on signal. Everything is based on signal. So if, I, if, if the GPS needs strong enough signal, that's the key to receiving the next step. Could it be the key to your life and that the signal, could it, could it actually be that it's obedience? Maybe sometimes there are seasons in my life that obedience is not where it needs to be because location matters. In order to get where you're going, your location Matter. So I, if I can say it like this, Abraham learned how to get where he was going because he had obedience. Abraham, but when he received a call here, that said, hey, go out. I'm getting ready to send you into a place that you don't even know. 
I'm getting ready to bless you, you and your family, but everybody that's surrounding of you. Before Abraham can take a step, he first had to obey. Before he even saw the land that God was getting ready to do in his life, Abraham actually had to obey. So my question that what God is also speaking to me and I'm ministering to you today is the call to answer your space of right now has everything to do with obedience. What is God speaking to you right now? Hebrews 11, 8 reads this way. I love this scripture. It says by faith. Somebody say by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going to receive an inheritance. He went out even though he did not know where he was going. It was by faith that Abraham was able to endure this journey that God has sent them on. See, what I love about Abraham is that we can study, we can trace Abraham's steps. That, and that what we find in Genesis 12 and going forward, that everywhere that Abraham spent enough time, he set up an altar. That we can see if he spent a significant time near, Abraham actually set up an altar and worship God. Even in life, you can begin to trace Abraham. This is how archaeology, they, they can trace Abraham's steps based on his landmarks of where he worshiped God. I just wonder, do you have some landmarks in your life? I just wonder that you may forget the seasons, you may forget the time, you may even forget the date, but you will never forget a landmark. When you're on a road trip, I even remember back in the day we used to take a road trip. And a lot of times people did not know, my uncles and aunts, they didn't know actually streets on how to get somewhere. But they can tell you about a landmark. Because people don't forget a landmark. Yeah, baby, just going down to the white picket fence. Yeah, that's where Aunt Murray lives and just make a left right there. They will begin to give you direction based on landmarks because landmarks, they remember. Landmarks begin to show you. Landmarks begin to tell a story. There's something about landmarks in your life. I just wonder, do we have enough altars in our life that represent landmarks of when God moved in your life? That you can remember Back on so-and-so that this is where I fell in love with God. On, on Back on this on day, this is where God spoke to me. Back on, this is the land I, altars in your home where you spent time with God. Altars in your workplace when your co-workers and bosses get it on your nerves. Come on, somebody. You got to have altars even in your car. You need to have altars throughout your life. Moments that you're spending with God. Do you have some landmarks? Places where you can go and worship God. See, landmarks let, landmarks, let your life be filled with landmarks. Places where you just spend time with God. If I can say it this way, please never forget your landmarks. In this series right now, never forget the space where you are right now. And we preached on last week that we're focusing sometimes trying to get there, but God is trying to bless us right here. So right here, place your altar, make an altar that this space, this place right here is holy. That this place, God is saying you're blessed. That in this place right now, that God is speaking to you, that he's getting ready to do something through you. It's not so much about trying to get there when God is trying to actually meet you right here. Through obedience, Abraham was able to move forward in his journey, if I, can, if I can share four points with you about the life of Abraham that I think is phenomenal, because in order, like we said earlier about nevertheless, in, in, in order to have a nevertheless attitude, we must learn how to stay at the altar. God could want to alter some things in your life, but we have to learn how to stay at his altar. The, the things that are in your life that could, could feel confused or broken, or things in your life where you don't know how to take the next step, could it be that God wants to actually meet you at the altar? That every single time where Abraham went somewhere, he made sure that he paused, despite what was going on, that he paused and he sat with God and he praised God. He made an altar to God because he knew I can't do nothing without him. That on this road trip, this journey, that no matter, we can't be so busy in life. That, that we don't make sure that we find time to pause and build an altar before God. If you want endurance in, on, on this journey because your life is not a sprint, your life is a marathon. If you're feeling though, it's that, that you're in a season right now where you may be running out of energy. 
that you're feeling as though that you may be running out of wind to make it to your next step. I'm believing if God is saying, if you would just find me at my altar, I will relight your fire. If you will find me at your altar, I will give you fresh wind. If you will find me at your at the altar, I will begin to speak fresh vision and clarity over your life. Could it be that your next step of vision and clarity is going to be found at the altar? Abraham did not know what his next step was going to be until he made time to find God at the altar. Don't be so quick to move in life and we can become very busy. But I believe that God is saying, if you learn how to slow down with me, I will learn. I, I will begin to release more to you because where I'm getting ready to take you, I actually want to prepare you for what I'm getting ready to do in your life. Creating space for God to be God in your life. It would, he, that's when he would give you more vision. We have to learn how to give God space so that he can be God in our life. That we're not just creating our routine that's based on us, but we actually are constructing our life center on him. Here I am. In order to have a nevertheless attitude, we must stay and write this down, the altar of his promise. At the altar of his promise, Genesis 12 and 6, it reads this as Abram passed through the land to the site of Shechem. At the oak of Moriah, at the time the Canaanites were in the land, the Lord appeared to Abram and he said to your offspring, I will give you this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. There were Canaanites in this land. The, the promise, the vision that God had given Abraham was already surrounded by enemies. Abraham had to learn how to set up an altar in the midst of his enemies. See, Abram could have easily said, you know what, God, this is too difficult. I can just go back to my homeland and pack up and go back there and go where I'm more comfortable at. But on this road trip that God was sending you on, he would send you to some places where it would feel uncomfortable. But in the place of uncomfortable, in the place of unknown, in the place of feeling I, I'm not well equipped, God is saying this, set up my altar. Set up my altar right here, right where you are right now. And here's what Abram did. He worshiped God right in the midst of his enemies. While they was worship another God, Abram began to lift up his hands and worship our God. Right where you are right now, where you're feeling the pain, God is saying, learn how to worship me even in the face of adversity. Learn how to worship me even when things don't go as though you think it should go. Learn how to worship me because at that altar, here it is, at this first altar, Abraham set up four altars. It was at this altar where God began to release more of his promise. Could it be that even in the face of your darkness and adversity, if we find ourselves in, at his altar, God will begin to release more of his promise to you. It wasn't on when, when, when Abraham was actually walking, he received more of the promise. It was actually at the altar where he began to receive more of his promise. If you want to, in order to have a nevertheless attitude, we must stay at, write this down, the altar, a dedication. Not only do you have to receive and be reminded of the promise, but you got to stay dedicated to the journey. You got to stay dedicated. There will be moments where you don't want to be dedicated. There will be things that begin to pull you away of where you are right now. You have to learn how to stay dedicated. And what I love about this in Genesis 12, 8 and 10, it reads this. From there, he moved on to the hill country east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. He built an altar to the Lord there and he called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram journeyed by stages to Nega. Verse 10, there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to stay there for a while because the famine was in the land was severe. God called Abram to this spot. Famine began to come. So instead of staying on the spot that he was supposed to, actually Abram went down to Egypt. He set up an altar first in the spot where God called him to be. But a lot of times there will be things that come and push us off our spot. And I'm here to encourage you today, family, do not allow outside circumstance 
to push you off the spot that God called you to be on. Then actually, Abram was not supposed to actually go down to Egypt. See, a lot of times, even though the scripture says this, that when he came out of Egypt, he came out of Egypt rich with, with livestock. But if you study the text a little bit closer, Abram actually got some other stuff when he went down to Egypt. If you read a little bit further in Genesis, when Sarah began to get a little bit jealous because she wasn't able to produce a son, there was this, there was this, as I can say, there was this chick named Hagar that came along. And you, if you study the text, where did Hagar come from? Hagar actually came from when Ab- Abram left his spot of anointing and grace and holiness on this spot, and he went down to Egypt. When he went down to Egypt, not only did he get money, but he also got a little bit of baggage. See, don't allow the enemy to trick you and think that he's, that he's giving you something. See, the enemy gave Abram some, he gave him something, but also some baggage came along with it. The enemy will always give you something with hidden fees. You would think that you're winning, but if you, look, if you move from this spot, there will always be hidden fees that you're going to pay for later down the road. So now, if you, even with Hagar, they server begins to manipulate and manufacture a blessing because she wanted Abram to actually have the inheritance to continue. See, when you move from your spot, you will find yourself in spaces of your life manufacturing blessings in your life. So they began to use a Hagar and then an Ishmael came through, but it wasn't through the plan and the obedience and the purpose that God called Abram to walk into. When you move from the spot that God is calling you to do, you will find yourself manufacturing blessings in your life. But when he was on this spot, everything flowed as he was supposed to flow. See, the beauty of, the beauty of this text where Abram set up this second altar, he had Bethel here, which means house of God. And then he had Ai over here, which was actually in the direction of the past. And then he had Egypt pointing south. Abram set up his tent, his altar right here in between the house of God and the past. Instead of turning to the house of God and going in that direction, Abram actually went south because famine was on its way. Don't allow, I say it again, don't allow outside circumstance to change the direction that God is calling you to. God was calling him in the direction of Bethel, the house of God. And that's the word that God is speaking to you to today because famine will show itself. Disappointment will show itself. Persecution will show itself. There are things in your life that will force you to try to turn the direction to go back to Egypt or go back to the past. But you got to be determined to say, on this spot, I'm blessed. On this spot, I'm anointed. On this spot, I'm called. On this spot, I will not go in that direction. I will only turn in the direction that God is calling me to go but the beauty about this text family is that is that we see that even in verse uh, Gen- uh, Genesis 13 verse 3 it said when he went by stages from Nagar to Bethel to the place between Bethel and Ai where his tent had formerly been to the site where he had built the altar let me read that again watch this where his tent had formerly been Where his tent, he returned back to the place that he was at before he went to Egypt. Abram began to retrace his steps back to the place that he was supposed to be at, and he dedicated himself at that spot. Could it be that God is recalling you to retrace your steps in certain seed spaces of your life? To retrace your steps back, not when you left and went to, went to go to somewhere else, but retrace your steps back and make an altar right here. Where are some spaces and some seat in the spaces in your life where we need to retrace our steps? Retrace our steps and stay dedicated to the thing that God is calling you to. My point number three is this. If you're looking in order to have a nevertheless attitude, We must stay at the altar of peace. The altar of peace. It reads this in Genesis 13. After Lot has separated from him, the Lord said to Abram, look from the place where you are. Look north, south, east, and west. For I will give you and your offspring forever all the land that you see. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count 
the dust of the earth, then your offspring could be counted. It says, get up and walk around the land through its length and width, for I will give it to you. Verse 18, so Abram moved his tent and went to live near the oaks of Marah and Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. This happened after separation. This happened after him and his nephew Lot had a disagreement. This happened after pain and grief and loss. Here's what I'm here's what I believe what God is speaking to you to believe that there's life after this. That life continues even though you may experience pain and grief and loss. That there can be life after this. And the beauty of this text, what I'm reading is that it could have been that Abram is actually in this space with his head down. He's walking around with his head down in disappointment. He's walking around with his head down thinking, though, this is, I came this far. My family is torn apart. I'm in grief. I'm in loss. This is heartbreak. And God speaks a word to him and he says, look up, look north, look south, look east, look west. Matter of fact, he said, begin to walk in your space. Why? Because I'm here. And when I'm here, holiness is here. When I'm here, victory is here. When I'm here, you are an overcomer. Begin to look up and look around. Maybe you're in a space right now in a season of your life. And God is saying, I need you to look up. I need you to begin to change your posture, not about where I'm getting ready to take you, but change your posture in this space. Because I'm here. I'm right where you are. I know what just happened. I know what you just went through. I know the pain that you feel right now. But even through that, I'm still with you. Even through that, I still call you blessed. Even through that, I'm still walking with you. Lift up your eyes because the king is here. Psalms 121 says this. I love this. Write this down. I lift up my eyes towards the mountain. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Where you need peace in this space, lift up your eyes. Lift up your head. Walk with your chin up in this season. I believe that's a word for all of us that in this moment, change your posture and walk around in your space. On Monday morning, walk around your work environment and say, God, you are here. Go back to your home today, set up an altar and say, you know what, God, I'm changing my posture right now. And I'm believing not walking with my head down, but walking with my chin up. Why? Because I look towards the hills where all of my help comes from. My help doesn't come from there. My help comes from there. And I'm going to continue to look with my head up. How's your posture in this season? Say to look around. Tell Abram to look around. Look east, look west. Begin to proclaim what belongs to you and the last one that he built in order to have a nevertheless attitude I love this one we must learn how to stay at the altar a sacrifice sacrifice the altar of promise yeah the altar of dedication yeah the altar of peace but also learning maybe you're in a season that God is calling you to sacrifice the sacrifice to begin to lay something down on an altar. Could it be that in order for God to get closer to you, sometimes he would teach us how to sacrifice something that's very close to our heart. Could it be that thing that's very close to your heart that's actually in between you and God? And he began to lay it down. I'm going to read this real quick as we begin to close out. Genesis 22, verse 1 and 2, it says this. After these things, God tested Abraham. And said to him, Abraham, here I am. He answered, take your son, he said, your only son Isaac, whom you love, go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering. One on one of the mountains, I will tell you. I I, I love this part, even reading this. He said, here I am. Here I am. The, the question that we, the question that we, we was talking about last week that God said to, to Adam, where are you? 
Abraham is answering the question that Adam should have answered back in the garden. Here I am. Here I am. Even in a, in a known country, God, Abraham responds with, here I am. Even out in the unknown, out in the deep, out and by himself, Abraham responds is still this, here I am. Maybe you're feeling lonely right now. And God is saying, I'm, 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 I'm talking directly to you. Where are you? Here I am. Here I am, heartbreaking all in this space. Here I am. Going through some stuff right now. Here I am. I'm still going to respond to you. If I go a little bit closer in, in Genesis 22, 11. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. He said, Abraham, Abraham. He replied, here I am. Here I am. And then he said, do not lay a hand on a boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thickets by his horn. So Abraham went and he took the ram and he offered it as a burnt offering in place of his son. To get ready to close out. And Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. So today it is, it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. I love this part because it's one thing, it's one thing family to worship God on a mountain, but can you still demonstrate your faith to God in the valley of a sacrifice? And the, down in the valley of a sacrifice, can you still worship and demonstrate that type of love? That Abraham, that God called Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. In other words, somebody or something or someone that's close to your heart. Do you still love me that much? Will you still obey me that much? Will you still walk through that much? God, you will find yourself in spaces where you don't understand your sacrifice. And I'm here to encourage you to continue to believe and trust God. Continue to believe and trust God, even though you don't understand the sacrifice on the other side of it, God will provide. It's not part of my notes, but even right now, I, 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 I did not understand when God called me to sacrifice my scholarship for football. I did not understand it. Something that I worked my entire life for. Devoted spent money, I had a calling for it. I remember, I will never forget the conversation where I actually had to call my coach on the phone and call him and say, I don't know what God is doing in my life. Just fell in love with him. He's telling me to tell you that I need to turn in my scholarship and go into ministry. I don't know nothing about ministry. I don't even know if a pastor's going to let me on their staff. <laughs> but he said, God said, will you obey me? I never forget it. I never forget it was, was invited by, we went to that, that youth worship conference. In the middle of worship, God began to speak. God began to say, the thing that's closest to your heart is in my way. I need you to release that so I can get to your heart and begin to do the very thing that I need to do. But there's something in the midst. There's something in the way. And God told me to pick up the phone and I never forget it. I had to pick up the phone and call three people. I had to call my head coach for college. He hung the phone up on me and said, you're crazy. I had to call my high school coach who was like a father to me. He hung the phone up and said, you're crazy. We, we work too hard for this. And hear my heart on this, I'm, I'm being transparent because we all three have a great relationship, but even my father, I never forget it, he hung the phone up on me and said, you're missing it. I don't know what you're doing. It has to be, that's, it was just a father love because he knew the work that we put in and he knew the calling that was on my life, but there was something else that God was getting ready to do and he hung the phone up. 
never forget it, hurt me. Three people, three father figures in my life never understood the moment of that sacrifice back then. I remember other people but used to come and say, hey, what are you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm in church, I'm doing ministry. Don't make any sense. You're not playing ball. I don't, this is what God's calling me to do. Sometimes you won't understand the sacrifice that God is calling you to. Give God your yes regardless. Because on the other side of that obedience, God is getting ready to set something up that will blow your mind. That God will lead you on a path on this road trip that he has you on. Eyes haven't heard, ears haven't heard what God has in store for you. That God is getting ready to do something. If you would just separate the thing that is closest to your heart and begin to release it to God and sacrifice it. Lay it on an altar and say, God, if that becomes between me and you, I don't want anything to come between, to come between me and you. Because I love you so much. I worship you so much. I don't want anything to separate my love from you. So Abraham laid and on the altar, God was testing his heart. God was testing his faith in this space. In this space. Maybe you're in a season right now where God is testing you in this space. He's doing it to increase your faith and your love for him. You can stand. Everybody can stand. In this space. Maybe God is leading you back to his altar in this season. Four altars that Abraham built on his journey. He built four altars. What does your altar look like right now? That's the question. What does your altar look like right now? When you go home, set up an altar. When you dry in your car, set up an altar. At, at work, set up an altar. Where is the space where you meet and talk to God? What does the space look like where you can give God your undivided attention? That's it. Not when you're doing other things, when you can give them your undivided attention. When your mind and your heart is directly on him, your focus on him. Because in that space, here it is, God will release the promise. You'll get rededicated. You'll have your peace. And you'll learn how to sacrifice properly. Father God, we love you, we honor you, we thank you. We thank you for your word even today. That as we lay on the altar, as your word says in Romans, that we are a living sacrifice. We lay on the altar that anything that's not of you, we ask that it be burned off of us right now. That we lay on the altar that you redefine our hearts, our mind, our soul. We lay before you, Lord, Lord God where our thoughts don't get it right. We, we alignment for you because we're looking to run in this season. So where we need a fresh alignment, we ask that you do it. Straighten us up where we're kind of broken. Straighten us up where we're hurting up, hurting at. You're mending our hearts even right now so that we can run like never before. We worship you. We love you. We thank you. Release your peace upon your people even right now. Right on their hearts, begin to, the vision that they're looking for, the clarity that they're looking for, begin to fresh vision on them even right now, Lord God. Your word says this, it's in you. We have everything that we need. We receive it. We love you. We honor you. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Now it is the time in the, all, in the uh, service for offering. And we have many, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, offer. <laughs> so we have many ways that you can give. You can give online and you can also text to give as well. You can text D-C-O-N-L to 833-399-7200 to receive a link to give securely online or simply go to the give page on our website at the Celebration Church DC app. Or you can now give in person 
in the hall to your left or at the sanctuary door as you leave there, there will be an usher for you. Um, I wanted to read a scripture before we pray over the offering. And it's in Malachi 3. I really, I really love it. And it reads, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Try me at it. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all the nations will call you blessed. For your land will be so much such a delight, says the Lord of heavens, of armies. You have said turbo. Okay, that's good right there. (laughs) This is such a powerful scripture. I I love how confident the scripture is. And it reads, try me, test me, test me at it and see. Won't I do what I've said that I will do for you? So now is a great time to give. Lord God, thank you so much. A word came on my heart today. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? So, Lord, I just ask that you cover our tithes and offering with the blessings and abundance that I know that you're opening. Like Pastor Brenda said, the blessings and, and just what, what our church is leading in our community and the lives of our church community. Lord God, I just ask that you cover us with joy and splendor, but also allow this to be a movement, a movement for our church, a movement for the community, a movement to show others what is possible in your name and to rebuild the kingdom here in Alexandria and, and sprinkle throughout the DMV, Lord God, uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so connect with us. Uh, if it's your first time, welcome. My name is Brittany. Um, you know, please remember to stop by the connect table. Everybody received a card on their way in, um, so you can fill that out uh, and you can chat with us, even if it's a basic question like, where's the bathroom? Like, we're really approachable, okay? Um, we want to know your name. Julia said it last week. Like, we are family, right? We love each other. Whether you have an Android like Leah or you're an iPhone person, we get it, right? We love you. Uh, you can also find the connect card on the website and you can, you know, take those next steps on how uh, you want to be involved with the church. Uh, What's really exciting is after we close out and we pray out, um, we have Next Step Sunday. And this is going to be the first Sunday of um, every month. And so if you're new um, and you've recently given yourself the Lord today, uh, immediately after service in uh, Theater 15, so to the right of of this theater, um, after 15 minutes, you'll be able to talk with Pastor Brenda, Pastor Anthony, myself, um, and just hear about Next Steps in your faith, um, as well as next Next Steps at Celebration. Uh, we're going to have it on the first Sunday of every month. Um, so if you can't make it this week because you've, you know, you've got things going on, no worries. We'll be here next month as well. Uh, and then reminder, drawing board tomorrow. Uh, when I texted last week, I texted TBD. That's funny because that's not what that was. So I had to text it again. So hopefully I'll get the information. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, so it's going to be uh, the fr- on Monday morning at 7 a.m. for the next six weeks starting tomorrow. So you still have the opportunity to definitely text. For this series, we'll be focusing on spiritual disciplines with a teaching from Pastor Anthony and a few moments of questions and answers each Monday. So definitely take that step uh, for your faith and for your, for your life. We're going to pray over the service as we get ready to leave. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and bring, and and Lord God, I thank you, Father, that you're going to lead us into a wonderful week, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you're going to keep us, Father, and may peace be our portion, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you're going to continue to be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen.